Hi, thanks for joining me today. Um, we're here at CB uh, Museum in Ventura County, part of Point Wainimi's uh, Navy base. And uh, we're gonna go inside and take a look of, uh, at the CB Museum and see the history of CBs. Well, first outside here of the museum before we head in, uh, you can see here the CB logo. Uh, it has all the different ratings on the arms of the, this B here uh, that are part of the CB uh, rates. Plus, you know, you have first, third class, second class, first class on this side. You've got hammer, pipe wrench, machine, machine gun. Looks like old Thompson machine gun. Uh, and what else we got here? Yeah, first, second, third class as well. It's different. Uh, different ratings inside the CD, CDs. Then we'll walk over here to the main entrance area. Over here we have a, it looks like an old type of bulldozer probably used during uh, World War II. CBs were made famous by a movie that John Wayne was in. Let's see here. What do we call this here? International Harvest Tractor with Biker's Erie Blade. International Harvester began manufacturing tractors in 1909. From 1939 to 59, IH produced the TD9 tractor in Illinois. Military, U.S. military began employing the TD9 as a light tractor during World War II. The CEBs use the TD-9 along with other brands of light tractors to build the Navy's bases throughout the Pacific Theater during the Second World War. Let's see here. It's got a nice entrance here. Here's a cool little item made. And uh, the CVs can do is their logo, slogan. Excuse me. All right, so here we have another dozer right here. And this one talks about uh, in November of 1943 on Treasury Island in the Solomon Islands, Fireman First Class, a road to Sony of the 96th Naval Construction Battalion used this, or not this one, his bulldozer to assist in the battle. Uh, Tassone drove his dozer towards the pillbox using the blade as a shield while Lieutenant Turnbull provided covering fire with his turbine. Under continuous heavy fire, Tassone crushed the pillbox with a dozer blade, killing all 12 of its occupants for this act was awarded the silver blade. So basically they, that uh, pillbox was uh, holding back the uh, personnel that were trying on the landing, trying to get on the beach. And they brought this on the beach and he drove it on and took out that pillbox. And the rest of the soldiers were able to continue on. Uh, for all you guys welders out there, this is an old carbide welder and lamp used during uh, World War II. I guess you'd put your bottles right here. You'd put your bottle right there. Huh. Interesting. So I guess during, uh, at one point up in Alaska in one of the bases, they are short material and so they couldn't use uh, steel for the water right during the World War II, so they used the wood here to make water lines. Uh, in San Francisco, you can still, some sewer lines, sewer lines are still used with redwood, but basically what happens is if the wood gets wet, it expands and uh, keeps, it, <clears throat> keeps it sealed. All right, this looks like a Vietnam scene here. Uh, the green uniforms used from the Korean War to, until uh, sometime in like around Iraq, but uh, 
they're a similar uniforms to Iraq, and that's when the Navy changed uh, uniforms, I believe, from the Navy green. Uh, right here we got a little 81 millimeter mortar launcher. And we got a little setup here, display. And then uh, this would be your typical barracks during Vietnam. Uh, plywood and roof, tin roof. And some screening around it to keep the insects mostly out. got see the bed with some screening I'm sure not everybody had had this nice but especially when you're out packing out but here we go here's a little machine gun here that was used during Vietnam by the CB so the CBs uh, use you know hyperchlorination unit here you know to uh, clean the water make sure we have safe drinking water and they also do it for a uh, you know, for civil actions, you know, like in other countries to help when they have dirty water and humanitarian assistance. Of course, the CVs are mainly a uh, land-based organization, but they do here do repairs under the water. Here you see a demonstration here of uh, repairing some type of communication line under the seafloor, and some type of uh, old unit you know, maybe. Let's see here some uh, dive equipment. Those dive suits and helmets. So Kirby Morgan, uh, he's out of Santa Barbara, California. Created all these helmets here. And then here we have an old uh, diving helmet right here. That was used again in 1942. And we have some tools right here that you can use underwater chainsaw, a welding stinger, and uh, I'm not sure what that other one is. Some type of grinder, a cutting torch. So the U.S. Navy has a combat demolition team, as you've seen, and here's some, a uh, Mark V deep sea suit that's been used from, uh, uh, what was that? 1916 until uh, 1985. This 84. This suit was was used to, for deep sea diving. Crazy that something so old was still used into the 80s. Something interesting. I didn't realize that at a PM3A was a uh, in Antarctica. Antarctica was a uh, you know National Science Foundation was they actually had a nuclear power reactor there and that the CVs helped uh, construct it and did all the other public works for that base in Antarctica. But I guess it was uh, decommissioned sometime in the 70s. But that's, uh, did not realize that we were running that plant in Antarctica as nuclear. Here's kind of like a little model here, I guess, of it that was designed and built in 1948. some uh, ice shoes you know some straps you know so you can walk in the ice a little face mask looks like there keep your face and gloves oh a little ladder I guess to walk across crevices crevasses and some ice screws Looks like they have these boots here that you could walk in uh, minus 20 degrees here. Here we have a uh, Hummer. Looks like it would be used during, uh, well, obviously modern wars. See uh, all of Iraq, Iraq, Afghanistan, Desert Storm. This picture in the background looks like Iraq. And then they have some type of transport bridge that was built here for the demonstration that CBs do build. Uh, this one has a little bit more of Iraq stuff. Here we have uh, Camp Knot. 
piece of the camp base at the memorial to SW3 Eric Knott. Camp 93, let's roll. And here we have a sniper rifle, an Al Kadish sniper rifle, it's kind of based on the Russian Dragunov. Uh, the CBs and the US Marines that were working together took this from Uday Hussein's private residence. Seen here of uh, ships unloading uh, supplies. We got pallets of boxes and uh, willy jeeps here coming off of a ship onto the pier. You can see some personnel looking looking down here. This would be a shipyard, either picking them up or taking them. I guess they could be taken to loading them up. Here's the uh, bases that they had during World War II and. Through, through time, some I think have closed, but I'm not totally sure. But uh, Tacoma, Washington here, Port Wyneme, California, Rhode Island, and Gulfport, Mississippi. And as I said, uh, Rhode Island is where the CBs got their name from construction to the CBs. Here we have the CB logo again, created in uh, 1942 in Rhode Island. When somebody asked about what, they, they needed a nickname for the construction battalions. And that was come up, that came up and, design was created and here we have it. So this is a, a smaller version of the a memorial over at the uh, CB Memorial at Arlington National Cemetery that was done by a uh, Felix Weldon who was a CB that had immigrated to the United States in 1940 in 19 in the early yeah let's say 42. Anyways he was part of and he designed this but I did not know that he was also the person that designed the memorial for the Iwo Jima. He was the sculpture artist as well for that. And he was a painter for the CVs during World War II. This is the uh, small version, obviously. This is a German anti-tank gun and a bridge where uh, that went, came down and the CVs had to build barges to, across this river to ensure that US troops could get across. This is a German anti-tank gun. And then uh, we have here, we got a, some Nazi paraphernalia, helmet, some knife. I guess this knife was taken off the beach of Normandy, off of the soldier. And then a Luftwaffe cap. And then we have a, I believe it's like what, a Ruger, but it's a, a Luger, yeah, Luger 9mm. Nazi medals and a Japanese camera. Here we have a Jeep that looks similar to the old Willys during World War II, but it's actually a Jeep that was designed after the Korean War. And here, we have a steel girder from a World Trade Center one from 9 11. And once again, the US Navy CV Lego sign. Here we have a picture of some uh, MRAP vehicles here. Looks like in Afghanistan. And here we have one 
in person this MRAP vehicle here was used in Afghanistan and uh, as you can see the damage there was ambushed in Afghanistan uh, by a, a RPG that partially penetrated the vehicle. You can see some of the explosion there. It's quite a big uh, vehicle here. You can see, and it can tow uh, other trailers and so forth with supplies. Well, I'm gonna wrap up the video where I started it here. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully I get better, uh, find new stuff, better ideas, get better, more confident and uh, making videos and I appreciate if you watched it all the way through and uh, if you like it, uh, please subscribe and like this video and uh, keep on working on getting more going. Thanks.